हरि ओम तत्सत वेलकम टू स्वामी ज्योतिर्मयनंद सोसाइटी आर जर्नी टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब फॉर द मिस्टिकल मीनिंग्स एंड टू एंजॉय डेली सत्संग वी आर करेंटली एक्सप्लोरिंग द बुक एडवाइस टू स्टूडेंट्स बाय स्वामी ज्योतिर्मयनंद जी महाराज नरेटेड बाय माय सेल्फ स्वामी निखिलानंदा सो इन टुडे सत्संग वी विल कंटिन्यू द जर्नी ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ व्हाट इज ट्रू एजुकेशन Imagine a student who is just 25 years old and wants his head propped up by a soft pillow on an easy chair. He doesn't want to do anything but move little buttons on a computer and expects his parents to do all the heavy jobs at home. Outsiders observing the student may think he has become well educated, but what type of a person will he become later? life presents so many threatening and challenging situations if one has not been disciplined if one is not accustomed to hard work then he is ill prepared to face these challenges while teaching children one must not be over protective and thus spoil the child if a child is not accustomed to having his ego shaken a little if he has not developed any patience and endurance in bearing insult and injury he has not been cultivating dharma as the foundation of his education the second purpose of life is artha or economic position money is a means to a higher end just having money doesn't mean much observe how so many people gain millions of dollars overnight in the lottery yet they don't make any difference in the deeper quality of their lives all the defects in their personality can even become more exaggerated this effect is similar to what happens when you look into a magnifying mirror when there was no magnification your face looked gentle and fine but look into a strong magnifying glass and you soon you become a giant and every hair looks like a big pole <laughs> that is what suddenly becoming rich can do it does not in any way make you a better person on the other hand if you are earning money with a basic grounding in dharma then the money that comes to you becomes a means to your self improvement a means to helping society by performing good deeds used in this manner it will not stir up your vanity the next and the third purpose of life is kama or developing social relationships that is also a part of education if you cannot adapt and adjust to your friends and live in harmony with family members then life becomes empty no matter where you are or in what situation you are placed you always find the challenge of different relationships if you cannot handle people with different moods and eccentricities then life becomes empty a person cannot live alone even if you are in the himalayas you would find that you are making friends with monkeys birds or squirrels you would find some relationship to overcome loneliness so kama is the vital value of life which allows you to live in harmony with others so that you are then free to plan how to help humanity to be able to expand and outgrow one's ego is the most profound aspect of education a true educated person is inspired by compassion to help others and he places every talent he has in the service of others in that way his talents increase more and more selflessness is the secret of discovering more and more talent and abundance within moksha or liberation is the ultimate purpose of life the entire educational process should lead you to liberation or mukti in this stage the knowledge that you gain is known as para vidya the upanishads say there are two types of vidya or knowledge known as para vidya and apara vidya apara is the lower knowledge or relative knowledge the knowledge that helps you in your daily life within that category of knowledge comes all the sciences and arts all the subjects that are taught in the universities para vidya however is the knowledge that is mystical when you practice concentration and meditation and are being guided by your guru 
then you discover a knowledge which brings about a complete fulfillment of the urge to know. Paravidya is that knowledge by which all is known. So, sort of a master key to all accomplishments. Paravidya is the attainment in which all educational systems must culminate. That is the goal. Keeping this in view, an ideal student must and should develop self-discipline. He should strive to develop virtuous qualities like humility, patience, sincerity and simplicity. He should practice self-introspection and austerity. He should be self-dependent. He should flow out of himself in service to humanity and thereby commune with God. Service of mankind is service of God. These are the great highlights of true education. If you have these, then you are really educated. Anything other than this is a deviation or lack of education, no matter how alluring or how big the degrees may sound. May God bless you with the purity of intellect that leads you to health, long life, peace, prosperity, success and liberation. So moving on to the next section of how to unfold positive qualities which is an essential skill to have for all of us. A divine treasure hunt. You must be as enthusiastic about cultivating positive qualities as you would be about discovering a buried treasure of jewels and gold. Day by day, little by little, try to develop as many virtues as you can. Even if you fail a thousand times, still you should continue with sincere effort. Never doubt for a moment the power of positive thinking. The daily repetition of strong positive affirmations will help you overcome the negative within your personality and enhance any virtue you sincerely wish to develop. Keep a list of virtues prominently posted in your room. Each time you look at them, your heart will be filled with good thoughts. Be sure to include the following virtues on your list. Let's discuss them. Nonviolence, humility, fearlessness, straightforwardness, truthfulness, endurance, compassion, cheerfulness, simplicity, forgiveness, generosity, friendliness, presence of mind and purity. The first step in developing your virtuous qualities is to look at yourself with an open mind. Do you see any of the following negative qualities in your personality such as anger, hatred, pride, hypocrisy, falsehood, fear, greed, violence, cruelty, harsh speech, gossiping nature, jealousy, lust or passion? If so, the next step is to determine what virtue is opposite to that negative quality and try to cultivate it. For example, Suppose you realize that you are unable to control your speech and you find yourself saying many things which you shouldn't say. Make an inner resolve, I will control my irritability and master my speech. Work towards that goal for one week, reminding yourself again and again of the benefits of possessing that virtue and trying your best to express it in your daily life. The next week, Focus your attention on some other negative quality and work on it in a similar manner. By doing this, you will gradually eliminate the negative within you and cultivate the positive. As you take up one virtue after another in this way, you will begin to truly enjoy the challenge of this treasure hunt of divine qualities. So this is a lifelong journey and it takes time and patience. So lovingly as a devotion to God, just like you offer the best flowers to God, 
try to develop these best virtues. They are already within you, but the vices obstruct their movement. So, control the voices, vices and develop those virtues. And in tomorrow's satsang, we will cover the topic of pranayama, which is proper breath control and energizing the body. This is Swami Nikhilanand. Hari Om Tat Sat.